David Crowley was an up-and-coming filmmaker from Apple Valley, Minnesota. He was a family man, who lived with his wife Komal, daughter Rainier and his dog Paleo. After serving in the U.S. Army, he settled down and focused on producing a movie called The Grey State. He ran a small production company and a company that provided props and weapon training for movies. The movie was about a dystopian future where the government has taken over the country. Martial law is imposed and it is up to a group of soldiers to bring down the government. The concept of the film was to bring conspiracy theories to life. The film was never completed. David, Komal and their daughter were found dead on the 17th January 2015 in an apparent murder-suicide. Neighbors who had been away, notice Christmas gifts are sat on the front doorstep of the Crowley's house. They presumed the Crowley's had gone away for the holidays. When the neighbor approached the doorstep, he noticed the dog barking. This raised suspicion so he looked through the front window. He saw what he thought to be mannequins on the floor, he called his wife over who realized that the mannequins were in fact the decomposed bodies of the Crowley family. She alerted police immediately. On the 17th of January, 2015, Apple Valley Police respond to a dispatch call from a concerned neighbor. They arrive at a house and observe through the front window, three decomposed bodies in the living area. Officers suspect these are the bodies of David, Komal and Rainier Crowley. A dog is seen running around the house. An officer coaxes the dog outside. When police enter the property they are overcome by the smell of decomposition and dog feces. It is apparent to police that the deceased have been undiscovered for some time and that the dog has been eating the bodies. One adult male is found laying on the living area floor, his head is missing and his right hand. A gun is found near his left hand. An adult female is found laying next to the adult male, she is laid on her front. Her head is also missing and both hands. A small female child is laid across the legs of the adult female. She is missing her left arm. Officers then observe the west wall of the room and discover that the words Allah Akbar have been written on the wall in what appears to be blood. On the floor, next to the male body is a blood-stained Quran. Crime scene investigators are called to gather evidence. Police immediately suspect that this is a murder-suicide. There are bullet fragments near the bodies, bullet casings and blood spatter on the floor surrounding the bodies. Police found various weapons and military equipment. David Crowley used these for his film production company. All the bodies had damage consistent with canine scavenging. The autopsy concluded that David Crowley had a gunshot wound to his head. His left hand was partially mummified and blood stains on his left side collar and chest. Komal Crowley had two gunshot wounds to the head, 
both her hands were missing and large clumps of her hair was found scattered around her body. Rainier Crowley had one gunshot wound and was missing the right arm from the shoulder. David Crowley was born on the 7th of July, 1985. He was the second child of Dan Sr. and Kate. He grew up in Oatana, Minnesota. He became best friends with Mitchell Hale in high school. After graduation they both joined the U.S. Army. They began basic training at Fort Benning, Georgia in 2004. David was then posted to Germany. David was then stationed in Iraq. During service David witnessed a car bomb that killed dozens of Swilders. In 2007 David was posted to Fort Hood, Texas. It was here that David would meet Comal in a downtown bar in Waco. It was a whirlwind romance, David and Comal married six weeks after meeting just before David was sent to Afghanistan. David finds out he is going to be a father. His daughter Rainier is born in August 2009. David had left the army by this time. David and his new family leave Texas and move to Minnesota. David enrolls in film school. It is here he begins to develop the idea for the Grey State. A dystopian world that has fallen to a government, a new world order reigns until a group of outlaws stand up and fight. David generates interest for the movie by generating publicity off the back of conspiracy theorists. This worked and David was able to raise the funds needed to begin making a script. David completed film school and worked odd jobs as an editor or producer whilst devoting most of his time to the Grey State project. In 2014 he went to Hollywood to pitch the script to prospective movie producers. The script gained attention but far from the big dream David had in mind for it. It was this year that friends and family began to notice David and his family distancing themselves. His social media posts show he was working on other projects but what was going on in reality was a concern. Kumal experienced a strange spiritual attack. David was beginning to lose weight and look withdrawn. With minimal contact with anyone, what was going on with David is a mystery, what could have propelled the events that would follow. Komal was born on 20th November 1986 to Nalia and Arajimalam. Komal was born in Saudi Arabia and then raised in Pakistan in an affluent household and as a Muslim. In 2005 Komal, her sister Sidra and parents immigrated to Texas, USA. Komal attends Baylor University. During this time she meets David Crowley at a bar in Waco. They get married six weeks later. Komal finishes university and trains to be a dietitian.
Kumal gets pregnant whilst David is on leave from Afghanistan. Their daughter Rainier is born, and they leave Texas to begin family life in Minnesota. Kumal supports her family by working in a clinic for eating disorders. Kumal is a loving mother. Very creative and finds a flair for cake making. Kumal is described as confident and happy by friends but her family are concerned that David is controlling and his movie project is causing financial stress. Kumal distances herself from friends and stops talking to her family. There were 282 murder-suicides in the first half of 2014. In the US alone, of the 617 incidents in total, 332 were homicides and 285 were suicides. Ninety-three percent of the incidents involved a firearm. Seventy-two percent involved a partner. Ninety-three percent of cases were female homicide victims, killed by their partner. Eighty-one percent of cases happened in the family home. Most incidents occurred in the bedroom. In 2016 there were 44,965 suicides in the US. Suicide is the second leading cause of death in 10 to 34 year olds. A study on post mortem canine scavenging concluded that 70% of the cases dogs had scavenged from the face of the decedent. 40% the neck area, only 25% of cases, the hands were eaten. Two dogs were left to starve when their owner died suddenly. After consuming all the dog food they began to eat from the owner's body. A month passed before the dogs were found. All that remained of the owner were bones, clothes and a set of dentures. The dogs had survived by drinking water from a toilet bowl and eating the flesh from the deceased owner. The dogs were healthy and well nourished. Although rare, dogs have been known to eat the heads of the deceased. Dogs have also been known to consume blood from the crime scene. There was partial mummification to David Crowley's left hand. Could the dog have licked residue from his hand and accelerated the process? The medical examiner must look for indications that post-mortem scavenging occurred, they can determine this by observing the bones of the body. The bones will have grooves that can be matched to the dog's teeth. Canine scavenging is rare and research cannot explain why it occurs, 
One theory suggests that the dog becomes distressed when the owner fails to wake up and in confusion the dog begins to chew. Forensics are aware that canine scavenging can destroy vital evidence. Post-traumatic stress disorder can affect anyone, it is more prevalent in those who have served in the armed forces as David Crowley did. He witnessed a car bomb during a tour of Iraq that killed dozens of soldiers. Marijuana was found in the home, one of David's associates frequently sold him the drug. Was this a precursor to psychological issues? He posted online about drinking absinthe, a notoriously strong alcoholic drink. He told a friend he may have been depressed but not realized. Months prior to his death, people around him notice a distinct change in his appearance, his weight and his behavior, he is becoming reclusive. A lot of red flags. Minnesota father who allegedly killed family in murder-suicide left reference to wife's Muslim faith written in her own blood. An Albright filmmaker's descent into madness, paranoia, and murder. Director of a Grey State documentary reveals the real conspiracy. Justice for David Crowley. Minnesota filmmaker obsessed with conspiracies killed family, himself. Did Freemason elite murder David Crowley? Evidence suggests David Crowley of Grey State was murdered. A Grey State and Crowley case propaganda and deception. Anti-establishment movie director found dead. Grey State, the movie. Was David Crowley killed for this? Another highly suspicious Liberty Truth death. Was David Crowley a target? Weeks before his death, David posts this message online this movie is meant to send other people to prison. David would research heavily on his projects, did he find something sinister? Was he being watched? Did a secret government squad murder him and cover up the evidence to silence him? For years conspiracy theorists have claimed a secret organization runs the world, this organization is known as the Illuminati. A group claimed to be made of the most powerful people in the world. The Grey State trailer featured Illuminati symbolism, and tapped into the biggest fears of conspiracy theorists everywhere. Hollywood is notorious amongst people for promoting the Illuminati and its claim to be controlled by it. Could the Grey State have been a real threat to those in power? Could 
this message have threatened to destroy a new world order by opening people's eyes. Some theorists claim the Crowleys were murdered as a hate crime. Komal was raised as Muslim and David as a Christian. Why Allahu Akbar was written on the wall and why the Quran was left on the floor is a mystery as neither of them continued to worship as adults and neither showed any contempt towards either religion. A knife was found at the scene but had no blood on it, Komal's hair was found in clumps all over the living area, she was found missing her head and hands. This fueled theories that they were murdered over their faith. Did David and Komal choose sacrifice? David was not religious but believed there was a higher power. In 2014, he got an on tattoo. Homel tells David she heard an unexplained voice whilst at home. Following this, Homel tells David she experienced a rapture. Being raptured is a reference to the Bible, a person is raptured to heaven. Was Komal experiencing some kind of religious conflict? During the experience Komal tells David that a spirit told her they must all leave this world. Did they make some sort of sacrificial pact? Police found no evidence of ritual or occult artifacts in their home. Police entered through the rear patio door. It was found unlocked and had been left open approximately an inch. A dining room table is laden with a child's pen bag and school work. The kitchen area has used cups on the counter and Christmas decorations on display. Pans are sat in the sink. In the middle of the counter is a laptop with bloody fingerprints on it. The screen shows a four-hour music playlist called Ascent which was left playing on repeat. A note titled Myth is displaying the words I have loved you all with all my heart. Next to the laptop sits a mobile phone, also covered in bloody prints. A tissue box has a smear of blood along it. On the floor below the laptop are two bloody footprints. Along the hallway blood splatter can be seen. Rainier's bed is unmade and clothes are strewn on the floor. Bathroom towels just sit on the floor and toilet is left unflushed. Police find an assortment of hard drives in the office. At the desk they find an open notepad with a bloody fingerprint. This is later confirmed as David Crowley's fingerprint and Komal's blood. Open the Rise is a reference to the film project David was working on. The Allah reference was never determined. 
the notepad has references to conspiracies and may have been used to create memes for an upcoming project. Paperwork shows a schedule for 2015. Above the printer sits the Nowell statue, this is a replica of the effigy used at the famous Bohemian Grove. It is linked to ritual practices. The master bedroom, again the bed is unmade. Clothes are scattered on the floor. A holster is found amongst the bedding. A gun safe is open with a set of keys and a gun cartridge sat. A pair of socks sits on the floor next to the bed. On the dresser marijuana was found and in the adjoining bathroom was a bonk. The basement has dog excrement all over the floor. bathroom had been built in the basement. This may have been where the dog was able to source water from the toilet bowl or bath. The towel has bleach stains all over it. The side rooms of the basement were used for storage of David Crowley's equipment. He had a business leasing props and costumes for film productions and a separate business for training actors to use guns in films, along with his own film production equipment. The living area where the crime occurred. A Christmas tree stands, according to police the fairy lights were left on. A sofa chair bears blood stains and strands of Komal's hair. Along the floor, dried blood spatter. Tufts of hair are found scattered throughout the scene, most likely from the dog chewing the remains. Transfer patterns of blood are behind the lounge chair. Police move the gun from the floor and place on a table, removing the cartridge for safety. A bloody print was found on the cartridge of the gun. An unspent bullet was found on the floor, this could suggest that the gun may have jammed at one point during the incident. Bullet casings were found under the lounge window area. Allah Akbar written by hand on the wall above the sofa. Police testing later confirms this is Komal's blood. The Quran found next to the body, had pages torn from it and was covered in bloody marks. Torn pages were found across the floor of the scene. A tablet was found propped against the sofa. The bodies were found laid on the blankets, that police placed on the sofa. A soft toy is laid amongst the debris. There is minimal blood staining apparent despite the nature of the injuries. 
police seized a number of weapons from the property for safety purposes. All weapons found were legally owned and kept securely. When searching the garage police located several boxes in the trunk of one of the vehicles. Inside the large storage box was medical supplies, emergency supplies and ammunition. Apple Valley Police closed the Crowley case after a year of investigation. It was filed as a murder homicide. However, this case has been full of oddities. The Apple Valley Police report indicates Rainier Crowley's the left arm missing at the scene, later the autopsy reports right arm missing. A strange error to make in the circumstances. David Crowley's brother Danny tells police he dropped Christmas gifts at the house on 28 December, but he didn't attempt to make contact with his brother. Doesn't it seem strange to leave gifts on the front doorstep and not at least check someone's home? A neighbor reports that he heard what sounded like rapid-fire gunshots at some time over the Christmas period. However he is unable to give any sort of time frame. Bearing in mind the proximity of the houses in the area, how could no one else have not heard gunshots? When police arrived at the Crowley house they had to remove the dog before they could enter. They report the dog barked relentlessly at their presence. 
It's odd that no one heard the dog barking prior to this. A neighbor who lives to the rear of the Crowleys told police she observed their patio door was slightly open. She told police she thought they were away for holidays but this didn't raise her suspicion enough to call police at the time. Apple Valley Police received a call from a Mr. Klein. He tells the police there is a bullet hole in the ceiling of the living area that has been bypassed by the investigation team. He claims to have been to the property with Mr. Crowley Sr. He tells police he does not know Mr. Klein and he was not at the house with him. The crime investigation team failed to notice a bullet hole in the ceiling, directly above the crime scene. A clean-up team found a bullet fragment amongst the carpet that the investigation failed to find. Two bullet fragments retrieved both contained DNA evidence that was relevant to the crime. Comal's sister told police that the last time she spoke to David was October 2014. He looked crazy, was of a disheveled appearance and thin. She expresses concern but never attempted to check on her sister. David's friend also tells police that he was concerned David's health was deteriorating. Another friend also notes that David's weight had dropped and he was fragile. Sadly, the family laid undiscovered for nearly three weeks. David's neighbors tell police his behavior was changing and that he began to wear military clothing and shaved his hair into a mohawk but as the image shows. David often wore military-style clothing and previously styled a mohawk hairstyle. David's friend tells police that he is a very loving man towards his family and loved his family more than anything in the world. He stated that David was not violent and had no extremist views. He had no religious beliefs but believed in a higher power. The mystery of the neighbors who cleared the snow from the drive of the Crowley house yet never noticed the dog or the smell of decomposition. The police report that a dining room light and Christmas tree lights and string lights were still on in the Crowley house. Oddly, the neighbor who observed the rear patio door open tells police that she observed no lights on in-house. There was speculation regarding the Allahu spelling on the lounge wall and the Allah spelling found on the office notepad that it was from a different person. The spellings are changed in relation to the context of use of the word. The Quran was found next to the bodies. Pages were torn out and blood stains are on the pages. It can't be clarified if the Quran was used for prayer or even as a weapon. The destruction of the crime scene caused by the dog has destroyed evidence. The police report shows no activity on the mobile after Christmas Day. It wasn't used to make a last call or text to anyone. It is strange that it is covered in blood. The laptop was reportedly set to a Bluetooth speaker nearby and that the music played repeatedly until the battery died. Speculation suggests the playlist was a soundtrack to the incident but a closer look at the tracks could discredit this. The scene of the incident throws doubt as to what events occurred when you notice the blood and lack of it. Although the dog could have consumed some of it, you would expect that more stain marks would be observed. The blood splatter is at varying angles. We know the deceased were fatally shot but examination of the direction of blood splatter and location of bullet fragments alters the positions of which the bodies were found in relation to the blood splatter patterns. Finally, the note on the laptop. The words are very similar to the ones Komal's sister told police Komal left on a note to her. Police are trained to preserve a crime scene until detectives arrive. It does seem apparent that the detectives in this case were quick to determine that it was a murder-suicide despite being unable to locate the bullet that killed David and the gun safe had Komal's DNA on it. There are a lot more questions than answers. Apple Valley Police closed the Crowley case after a year of investigation. It was filed as a murder homicide. 
police found a handgun next to David Crowley's left hand. Was David left-handed? No. David was right-handed. So why was the gun found next to his left hand? The final year of David Crowley's social media begins with a post about seclusion writing for his Grey State script. A week later he discusses the submersion he feels for his Grey State characters and the sadness he feels for them. March 2014 and David posts he is unsubscribing from conspiracy feeds. Two months later and he posts that the Grey State script is nearing completion. Followed by a post saying he is drunk by 1 p.m. May 2014 and David posts he has begun work on six more films. When police searched his office they found what appears to be a script for a new project. The 22nd of May, David and Komal visit California. David gets an OM tattoo and then celebrates his and Komal's anniversary. The same day David posts he is in meetings with Hollywood producers. The following day he posts his dreams just came true, he is referring to the Grey State getting picked up for a film deal. He then posts a picture of him stood outside Universal Studios. June 2014 and David posts an article about crafting the life you want. The 10th of June and he posts that he has booked a flight to LA to begin film negotiations. July 2014 and David posts that his movie prop company The Bullet Exchange is closing down then posts a message about Spirit Quest. The 7th of August and he posts that Grey State is two years old. The 4th of September and he posts about having a yard sale, selling off his movie costumes. October 2014 and he posts about following his dreams, having too much absinthe and changes his cover photo to the spirit of American youth rising from the waves statue from Normandy. In messages to a friend David tells him that he is going through personal troubles. He thinks he was depressed but was unaware of it. He then tells his friend about financial struggles. He then tells his friend about the memes he has been working on. In the office police find a sticky note and notepad with references to what could have been meme subjects for his Rise promotional material. In December 2014 posts that the Grey State rework called The Rise is almost ready, he mentions that he wants to give it away for free. Cryptically he ends with, Soon it will be time to go live and we'll get to watch it all unfold. Police find a notepad with message. Open The Rise. Nothing in any of his postings reveal any type of warning signs that David was unhappy or struggling with life. He was focused on his film scripts and regularly posting updates. In May 2014 Comal visited her sister in Texas, then went to California with David, they celebrated their six-year anniversary while there. In July Comal found out her mother was diagnosed with cancer. Komal was upset that her mother chose to have chemotherapy, for some reason she opposed this. In August 2014, Komal and David threw a barbecue for their daughter's birthday. They invited family, friends and associates. But people noticed there was tension between David and Komal. Her sister noticed that Komal began to change after this, she felt Komal was being controlled by David. When David spoke to Komal's father in October 2014, the conversation became heated and David told them to no longer have any contact with him or Komal. Komal's sister was unable to contact Komal, she ended up driving to Komal's home but was confronted by David. A colleague of Komal noted that in October of 2014, 
Komal quit her job at the clinic she worked at and from that point she felt Komal distance herself. When they met the following month for coffee, Komal told her she was writing a book but confessed that she would go weeks without leaving her house which is contradictory to the school report, which stated Komal and David collected their daughter from school every day. The last contact they had was via text message on December 21, 2014, they discussed meal plans. In an email exchange between Komal and David's sister, in November 2014, she mentioned that her mother was still in hospital, so she must have had some communication with her family. An email dated 15 December, Komal starts to get a bit aggravated with David's sister. She refers to an incident in August where David cried, suggesting some drama occurred between himself and his sister. Whatever happened, Komal is clear she wished to spend Christmas away from David's family. The rapture experienced by Komal was found on David's journals after their death. Here is a transcript of that conversation. I was just getting back from Home Depot with a bunch of wood to build the compost bin. Had lunch with Komal. And um, she began to shake and weep. And um how um as if, like someone had died. And um um she said um this is what rapture is. You gotta give me some time. Can I just lay here please? Um do you, I was just trying to remember everything. If you wanna contribute and help me remember. Okay. You said you've come from very far to find me and Ronnie and I need to come with you and there's not much time. Time is um not of our world. On some level your soul has committed to mine. And we're going to go somewhere and Ronnie's coming with. I'm kinda skeptical, gotta be sure of the source from whence it came was real. I don't know. I, my skeptical side right now, my scientific side. My brain's questioning. Is it something to confuse us? Am I crazy? Was Komal experiencing mental health problems, was she suffering? Was David struggling to deal with Komal, could this have been the precursor to the event that would follow? We will never know. The Crowley case is full of inconsistencies. Are we to believe a seemingly happy family man with a promising future could suddenly snap then murder his family? We know tragedies like this happen often but what is it about this incident that stands out above the rest? David was working on a film that threatened to send people to prison, he knew how to generate attention for his projects, he even went to the famous Bohemian Grove and met with the king of conspiracy, investigator Alex Jones. Having researched all the material available, amongst all the mistakes and inconsistencies something did stand out. David and Komal began to distance themselves from people, late September 2014. Friends and family records all collaborate this fact. Something was causing them to withdraw, even their daughter's school confirmed that in October, Rainier was extremely distressed for no apparent clear reason. The Grey State documentary premiered in April 2017, Eric Nelson was given unlimited access to David Crowley's journals and his personal footage, he produced a documentary that coincided with the official conclusion that David snapped and murdered his family. For the most of the film, he uses footage David filmed for his own Grey State documentary combined with interviews with David's family. Komal's family refused to sign the release papers as they were unhappy with the documentary's direction. The editing does a good job to portray David as someone who was obsessed with his Grey State production, 
It featured a clip that David recorded of Komal speaking about having been raptured, she is clearly distressed, she speaks of an encounter with a spirit who claims to have told her she must leave this world with family. David seems to console her and show concern, it is very alarming to watch. Most alarming though was watching the family and friends of the Crowleys show little emotion when discussing such a tragedy. Sadly they failed to mention the death of David Crowley's mother. In December 2014 in an email exchange between Komal and David's sister, David's mother is convinced they are dead because David is not communicating with them. It's a little eerie as it was a foreboding of what was to come. The documentary just paints a picture of a man going mad, it doesn't explore other possibilities aside from a little segment about a group of people that have devoted their time to seek justice for David Crowley by investigating the case. I've attempted to combine all the relevant data so you the viewer can decide for yourself whether this is a crimspiracy. Did David snap? Nothing in his social media posts, interviews with friends or journals revealed any signs that he was close to snapping, the only change noticed was that he was distancing himself from people, but David was focused on bringing his Rise film to Hollywood, days before his death, he was emailing a producer regarding a script. David would never know that the producer contacted him to secure a meeting. David loved his dog Paleo. He was a key part of his family, it's hard to contemplate but surely he would have killed the dog or let him out. What does the crime scene tell us? The bodies were discovered in the living room. David's body was laid in the opposite direction to his wife and daughter, his left foot was partially covered by the blue blanket and Komal's cardigan was draped across his right leg. He was laid on his back with both arms out to the side. The gun found near David's left hand despite being right-handed. Could the Crowley's dog have been capable of moving the bodies around? The knife that was found on the scene, was it used to dislodge a stuck bullet from the gun? An unspent bullet was found on the floor. Komal's hands were missing even though she was found laid on her front with her arms crossed over each other. Three bullets found contained Komal's DNA. Due to the remains of skull left only two bullet holes could be identified, why would she have been shot so many times by an experienced ex-army veteran? The daughter had one fatal bullet wound, the remains of the skull of David has one exit wound. The crime investigations took many samples for testing but not all items were processed. There were five bullets fired but no neighbors heard five shots being fired. No one checked on the family, despite airing concerns about them both, the time of death is undetermined. Why was Allah Akbar written in Komal's blood? When did the shooting occur? The curtains were left open and a dining room light was on, did it happen in daylight or evening? What was on the tablet found in the living room area? Why would David think it is important people watch the Rise film if he just murdered his family? Did he really create a soundtrack to murder? The bloody footprints, why only his toes and front of feet covered in blood, would have been slippery to walk on tiptoes. For someone so creative, don't you wonder he would have left a more thorough suicide message to people? Was the family murdered? The more you understand the inconsistencies the more validity you want to give to this theory. You have the disassociation from people, was David in fear of someone, had he uncovered some secret information when researching? The most common way to hide a homicide is to stage a suicide. Crimspiracy or a simple tragedy? You decide. 